I'd like to propose a vote of thanks to Sir Harry for his statesmanlike speech, and to Mr. Twiston, whose words had the eloquence of an emigration agent. A ripping speech, Twiston. Now, you're coming home with me. I'm all alone, and if you'll stop a day or two, I'll show you some very decent fishing. Listen, Sir Harry, I have something pretty important to say to you. You're a good fellow, and I'm going to be frank. Where on earth did you get that poisonous rubbish you talked tonight? Oh, was it as bad as that? <laughs> it did sound rather thin. I got most of it out of the progressive magazine, and pamphlets that agent chap of mine keeps sending me. But you surely don't think Germany would ever go to war with us? Ask that question in six weeks, and it won't need an answer. If you'll give me your attention for half an hour, I'm going to tell you a story. So you see, so you have got here in your you house, here the, in man house, house the man that is wanted for the Portland Place murder. Your duty is to send your car for the police and give me up. I don't think I'll get very far. There'll be an accident, and I'll have a knife in my ribs an hour or so after arrest. Mm. Nevertheless, it's your duty as a law-abiding citizen. Perhaps in a month's time you'll be sorry, but you have no cause to think of that. What was your job in Rhodesia, Mr. Hannay? Mining engineer. I've made my pile cleanly, and I've had a good time in the making of it. Not a profession that weakens the nerves, is it? <laughs> As to that, my nerves are good enough. I don't want proof. I may be an ass on the platform, but I can size up a man. You're no murderer, and you're no fool. I believe you're speaking the truth. I'm going to back you up. Now, what can I do? First, I want you to write a letter to your uncle. I've got to get in touch with the government people sometime before the 15th of June. Mm. That won't help you. This is foreign office business, and my uncle would have nothing to do with it. Besides, you'd never convince him. No. I'll go one better. I'll write to the permanent secretary at the Foreign Office. He's my godfather and one of the best going. Now, what do you want? Good. That's the proper style. Oh, by the way, you'll find my godfather, his name's Sir Walter Bullivant, down at his country cottage for Whitsuntide. It's close to Artenswell on the Kennet. And that's done. Now, what's the next thing? You're about my height. Lend me the oldest tweed suit you've got. Anything will do, so long as the colour is the opposite of the clothes I destroyed this afternoon. Then, show me a map of the neighbourhood and explain to me the lie of the land. Lastly, if the police come seeking me, just show them the car in the glen. If the other lot turn up, tell them I caught the South Express after your meeting.
First, turn to the right, up by the long firwood. By daybreak, you'll be well into the hills. Then, I should pitch the machine into a bog and take to the moors on foot. You can put in a week among the shepherds and be as safe as if you were in New Guinea. Thank you. Think nothing of it. You got me out of a tight spot last night. Now, you better get cracking. Good luck. Good day to you. Confound the day I ever left the herding. There I was my own maester. Now I'm a slave to the government, tethered to the roadside with sair een in a back like a suckle. Mercy when my head's bursting. I can't do it. The surveyor man just report me. I'm for my bed. What is your trouble, may I ask? The trouble is that I'm no sober. Last night my daughter Merrin was wadded, and the dance still fair in the byre. Me and some other chills sat down to the drinking, and here I am. Pity that I ever look at the wine when it was red. Sleep sounds like your best bet. Mm, it's easy speaking. But I got a postcard yesterday saying that the new road surveyor would be ruined the day. 
He'll come and he'll no find me, or else he'll find me foo, and either way I'm a done man. I'll have all back to my bed and see him no wheel, but I doubt that'll no help me, for they can my kind of no wheelness. Where's your house? Uh. Well, back to your bed and sleep in peace. I'll take on your job for a bit and see the surveyor. Eh? Oh. Oh. Hey, you're the belly. It'll be easy enough managed. I finished that bang of stains, so you need to chop any mail for noon. Just take the barry and wheel enough metal for your own quarry down the road to make another bang the morn. My name's Alexander Turnbull, and I've been seven year at the trade and twenty afore that herding in Lethen Water. My friends call me Aki, and Wiles Specky for I wear glasses in wake of the sicht. Just you speak the surveyor fair and calm, sir, and you'll be well pleased. I'll be back, uh, my day. Alexander Turnbull. I am the new county road surveyor. You live at Black Hawk Foot and have charge of the section from Laidlaw Byers to the Riggs. Good. A fair bit of road, Turnbull, and not badly engineered. A little soft about a mile off and the edges walk cleaning. See you look after that. Good morning. You'll know me the next time you see me.
Morning! That's a fine, easy job of yours. Uh. There's real jobs, and there's better. I would rarely have yours, sitting a day in your hinderlands in eight cushions. It's you and your muckle cores that wreck my roads. If we all had our reeks, you should be made to mend what you break. I see you get your papers in good time. Aye, in good time. Seeing that that paper come out last Saturday, I'm just six days late. You've a fine taste in boots. These were never made by a country shoemaker. They were not. They were made in London. I got them through the gentleman that was here last year for the shooting. What was his name now? Did you see anyone pass early this morning? He might be on a bicycle or he might be on foot. Uh, wasn't up very early, you see. My daughter was married last night and we keep it up late. I opened the house door about seven and there was nobody on the road then. Since I come up here, there has just been the baker and the Rachel herd besides you gentlemen. Excuse me, may I trouble you for a light? Ah, ah, Hello, Jobly. Ah, well met, my lad. Who the devil are you? My name's Hanny, oh, from Rhodesia, you remember? Good God, the murderer! Just so. And there'll be a second murder, oh, my dear, ah, if you don't do as I tell you. Give me that coat of yours, that cap oh, too.
<laughs> now, my child, sit quite still and be a good boy. I mean you no harm. I'm only borrowing your car for an hour or two. But if you play me any tricks, and above all, if you open your mouth, as sure as there's a god above me, I'll wring your neck. Savvy? Just, just don't hurt me. A thousand thanks. There's more use in you than I thought. Now be off and find the police. I'll get you!
see me in a hurry, my friend. <laughs> from justice, eh? Well, we'll go into the matter at our leisure. Meantime, I object to my privacy being broken in upon by the clumsy rural policeman. Go into my study and you will see two doors facing you. Take the one on the left and close it behind you. You will be perfectly safe. have gone. I convinced them that you'd cross the hill. I do not choose that the police should come between me and one whom I am delighted to honor. This is a lucky morning for you, Mr. Richard Hanny. I don't know what you mean. And who are you calling Richard Annie? My name's Ainsley. So? Uh, but of course you have others. We won't quarrel about a name. Hmm. Oh, I suppose you're going to give me up after all. And I call it a damn dirty trick. Oh, God. I wish I'd never seen that cursed motor car. Here's the money and be damned to you. Oh, no. I shall not give you up. My friends and I will have a little private settlement with you. That is all. You know a little too much, Mr. Hanny. You're a clever actor, but not quite clever enough. For God's sake, stop jawing! Everything is against me! I haven't had a bit of luck since I came on shore at Leith. What's the arm in a poor devil with an empty stomach picking up some money he finds in a bust-up motor car? That's all I've done, and for that, I've been chivied for two days by those blasted bobbies over those blasted hills! I tell you, I'm fair sick of it! You know what you like, old boy? Ned Ainsley's got no fight left in him. Hmm. Will you oblige me with the story of your recent doings? I can't, Governor. I've not had a bite to eat for two days. Give me a mouthful of food, and then you'll hear God's truth.
I can have the money back for a fat lot of good it's done me. Those perishers are all down on a poor man. Now, if it had been you, Governor, that had found a quits, nobody would have troubled you. You're a good liar, Hanny. Stop fooling, damn you. I tell you, my name's Ainsley, and I never heard of anyone called Anna in my born days. I'd sooner have the police than you with your Hannays and your monkey face pistol tricks. No, no, Governor, I beg pardon. I don't mean that. I'm much obliged to you for the grub, and I'll, I'll thank you to let me go now the coast's clear. I do not propose to let you go. If you are what you say you are, you will soon have a chance of clearing yourself. If you are what I believe you are, I do not think you will see the light much longer. I want the Lanchester in five minutes. There will be three to luncheon. You will know me next time, Governor. Carl, stecke diesen in den Lagerraum. Und bis ich zurückkomme, bist du mir vor ihm verantwortlich.
What in the name of... What's happened to you? Forgive me. I've taken a pretty bad fall. Come in. Come in. Please, take this as payment for your hospitality. No, no. Keep your cellar. No! Give it to them that he erected it. Oh, erect then, if you insist. Take my plead and... Oh, this old heart that belonged to my man. Where are ye that come stravagin' here in the uh, Sabbath morning? Ah, oh. oh, have ye got my specs? You'll have come for your jacket and waistcoat. Come on, by. Wash, man, you're terrible doing to the legs. Hold up till I get you to a cheer. Thank <laughs> you. 